Welcome to the Netherlands, OPEC country. Because our economy runs on cheap gas, coal and oil. And the companies behind that, they make us believe that we'll keep on doing that for the decades more to come. I think that they are wrong. And I'll show you why. This is a recent photo taken from Google Maps. They updated their maps and then disappeared. This is a new factory being built in Nevada, USA. And it's not just a factory. When it's ready, it will be the biggest factory of the USA after the Boeing factory. It's being built by Tesla, Tesla Motors. But they are not making cars there. They'll be producing batteries, just batteries. In fact, when this factory is ready, the total battery production in the world will double at once. And why are they making such a big battery factory? Because they want to build a car for all of us. You probably know this car, Model S, best-selling electric car in Europe at this moment. Um, but it's kind of pricey. So they will introduce in two months a new model, Model 3, which will have approximately the same range as this one, but will cost you only 30,000 euros. So that will be a price for the masses. And by doing that, combined with stricter regulation on emissions, by the governments, they have triggered the entire outdoor industry, because now everyone is joining in. First, Nissan, Renault, at this moment, market leader electric cars in the world, they already said, we will never give up this market leader position. In two years' time, they will come with more more models at the same price point and at the same range. GM, biggest car maker in the US, introduced two weeks ago the Chevrolet Bolt, a car with a range of 300 kilometers and 30,000 euro price, but will go in production already this year. So they will try to beat Tesla at its own game. Volkswagen, well, those guys, they don't work there anymore. <laughs> they were involved in Dieselgate, so they are gone. And they have already introduced 20 new models electric. And this is the biggest car maker in the world. So everyone is joining in. But let's not forget this one. Apple, a lot of rumor about it about them getting into the auto market as well. And they know they can, because they're like Tesla, a Silicon Valley company, very good in integrating hard and software and making beautiful products by doing that. But they have one difference with Tesla. They have 400 billion in cash. Tesla doesn't. So Tesla, in the last three years, built a supercharger network which enables me and other Tesla drivers to drive through the whole of Europe. I was in Norway last summer, I was in Barcelona last Christmas, and it's very convenient. And they have done that on three continents. Apple can do the same on all continents and still have $399 billion left. So when Apple is getting in, and your car maker still hesitating on electric cars, if this will be the future, you will face your Kodak moment. Extinction. So that is reason number one. Reason number two. This is my roof, right here in Utrecht, in Lombok. Fifteen years ago, I was the first uh, house in Utrecht who produced more power from the sun than I consumed myself. So at the end of the year, my meter was lower, and my energy company did not accept it. They refused it, they corrected it, they, it didn't fit the system. Last year, I changed those panels, and something happened. On the same roof, my solar production six-folded. So six times more production on the same roof. This is technology improvement every year. So every two and a half years, doubling of production. And if you know Moore's law, 
the, the, the law on computing power, you know what this means. It will change and disrupt everything. So that is happening already all over the world. Because on more and more places, solar is already cheaper than coal, oil and gas. And that happens now with an enormous speed. Last year, 500,000 panels were installed every day worldwide. This year, around 700,000. Next year, this will go to a million solar panels a day. This is like a coal plant in two to three days being built with renewable energy, just solar. And when you combine this unstoppable solar trend with more and more electric cars coming into our neighborhoods and our country, then a new energy system emerges. And this is why. One charge of a Tesla battery can power a Dutch household for more than 10 days. This Norwegian house, where we were last summer, for more than a month, on one charge. So are you getting it? A new energy system arrives, in which we can use solar power not only when the sun is shining, but also when the sun is not shining. We can use the power of the wind when the wind is blowing, but also when the wind is not blowing. Batteries of cars getting bigger and bigger, more and more solar and wind becoming available, and then our cities and our neighborhoods can run on this power 24 hours a day. And this movie of Nissan gives you the idea how this future could look like. And this can happen everywhere, in all neighborhoods all over the world. And then imagine a future in which cars get more and more in intelligent and more and more autonomous. And they will themselves decide which is, what is the best time and place to charge and when is solar and wind available. And they will pick their charging moment for you. Then this local energy system gets perfect. And that is what we are building in Utrecht in Lombok today. My company, Lomboxnet, was the first private company to install a fiber network in a big city of Utrecht. And then we started installing solar panels on schools. We have now a solar on 13 schools in Utrecht, and we'll be building seven big ones this year. And in Lombok, we started combining those, solar with cars. The white building, that's our office. In the front and on the right, you see the first schools in Utrecht with solar. And they are connected on one grid. And before our house, we installed a charging station directly connected to those solar panels. So if you charge there, you get a full follow-up with solar. And believe me, driving on solar, it's great. <laughs> so this was the first one in the Netherlands. After that, we developed a charging station that could not only do charging, but also discharging. This was the first one in Europe. And by doing that, this one is behind our office, we were able to run on solar for 24 hours a day, our own solar. So, and it's not just our house, but also our office and our internet uh, devices, all on our own solar with our own uh, storage. So for me, <laughs> thank you. So for me, no more coal needed. Last year, we introduced a charging station that can do both. Bidirectional charging, so charging and discharging, and solar-controlled charging, which means that if a cloud comes before the sun, the power to the car goes down. If the cloud goes away again, the, the, the power to the car goes up. It was introduced with a lot of attention from the media. And the future looks like this. Right now, we are building Energy Lab Lombok, which consists of 20 of those charging stations. And as we speak, they are connected to the grid by the grid operator Staden. We do this together with companies like General Electric, but also car companies like Nissan and Renault. We'll install more solar in this area, and we'll introduce cars in car sharing programs, so everyone can enjoy also the electric driving. And after that, the region of Utrecht have signed an ambition to become the first region in Europe with this new energy system. 
These are 15 aldermen who signed uh, up for this ambition uh, two months ago. And this will be a new region and a new system based on 1,000 solar chargers, 1,000 electric cars in a car sharing program, and 10,000 of new solar panels. And when this is being built, another coal plant can be shut down. So the future, tomorrow your car will run electric, the day after it will power your house, and it will be 100% renewable, it will be 100% clean, and it will be the end of coal, oil and gas. So, let's go.